my shit at home. Um, okay, so we recently just celebrated our 10th year wedding marriage anniversary. Um Ten year anniversary. Yes, we just celebrated our ten year anniversary. We're still celebrating. Yes, and um so it's not like ten years of like a wedding or ten years like with or, or dating, it's like ten years of marriage. Yep. So we've been married since twenty ten. In this thing. Yes, we've been in this thing and we got married on the eighth of August in twenty ten at church. <laughs> and I posted a picture of, of the day yep. when I was wearing my purple dress and, and I still the shoes. I still had my dreadlocks. <laughs> People actually think it's a different guy. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. That guy and this guy have got nothing in common. But it's the same husband. <laughs> He, no, he actually got better. He got better. He got better. No, I'm saying it's the same person. But it's it emotionally. They look is. alike. <laughs> it's you, baby. Seriously, it's you. I I say they look alike. Okay, they look alike. Yes. Alright. So Please. So today I'll just we just want to answer a few questions because we've been getting like a lot of questions and people are like, ah, oh, 10 years of marriage, you know, how did you guys meet? And mm -hmm. everybody just wants to sort of know the background of, yeah. of where we where we started. Um, okay. Yeah, so where did we meet? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, we met I, I think Wait, can can I tell the story? Can I say okay, something? Cool. So what happened was it was my sister's Lobola. So Pindu was paying Lobola for innocent. And Pindu had invited my husband to be there. I didn't know him. So he was buying meat. Yeah. Nina, I was taking meat to the bride's stand. And he was like, Who are the wow? Who is this girl? And mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, precisely that's it. And um, I, I think that's not that's where we met. Yes. But where I first saw you. It was like saw me, saw me, saw me. Yeah, it was <laughs> moving cars, guys. Moving cars. Yeah. We were driving. Pindu was driving into town, and I was also from work. With I think with a group of friends, I was driving into town, mm -hmm. and then I greeted Pindu because I knew his car, and then at the robbers, and then when I looked into the car, just a glance, I saw the people, the the beautiful people in the car, and. Yeah, from there I drew an interest. And when he invited me, I think I wanted to be invited. So, yes. Oh, so you, I didn't see you then, the yes, first time. Yes, yes. And then, yeah, and mm. then he saw me. Mm. Imagine on my sister's Lobola. Okay, so my sister's Lobola was in April, that's when I met my husband. Mm -hmm. In August, we got married. Mm -hmm. In December that year, we had twins. So, that's so, how quick we, things no, no, went. We missed one step. <laughs> Yeah. We paid Lobola in June. So the, the, the blessing didn't come before the Lobola. So the families gathered in June. Remember it was cold. Yes, and okay, okay, was okay, okay. All right. Wait, like I wanted to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. So in April on the 10th, mm -hmm. I met my husband. Yes. Right? He saw me mm -hmm. and he was like, Wow, I want this girl. Yes. In June, he paid Lobola. In August. Two months later. Yes, in August we got married. In December we had twins. Ah, <laughs> Yeah, it, it happens. It happens when when when. Yeah. I think what what most couples are struggling with, or maybe not even couples, what most people are struggling with, is how do I know this is the one? And, and, and how do I then commit from there without regrets, without yeah. uh, the back and forth and, and all that. And, and most of, um, I think there's a, a dating that, that, that has been thrown in there to say, no, get to know her and everything. Yeah. It, it works, you have to know the other party. But I think what worked to our advantage was that we subscribe to the same principles, God, right? Saying, at the point when I met her and how I knew I have to commit, it was not about me having to date her for several months, several years for me to get to know her. You know that you know that you yeah. know. Yeah. So I, 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 my comfort was in the fact that God knows her 
and if I know God, then everything is done. You know, it's sort of, it, 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 it's, I think Christianity from then, it has shifted a bit where people go into church and they're looking for marriages and as a result there are a lot of fake people in there and that principle that worked in 2010 may not necessarily work in 2020 because then though there, were, there was a bit of corruption and corruption, corruption. I'm, I'm referring <laughs> to um, smash and grab yes people who put on masks so i think it was still at an early stage you, you'd still get away with this and that so yes the fact that she subscribed to the same god that i subscribed to yeah. was good enough and i was like let's do this man yeah let's do this so and and basically the rest was history i think yep. then we basically we were staying in a flat so my husband was staying in a one bedroom flat mm -hmm. so then i moved in and then as soon as the boys or just before the boys arrived um mm -hmm. I, didn't, I think i was legally pregnant we then moved into a two-bedroom apartment right yes in summer in summer and we moved into a two renting bar yes so we're renting and then a couple of years later we moved into a three-bedroom house the reason was they we couldn't have visitors because one room was ours the other room was the helper oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and the kids so we wanted a third room so that we can have visitors to come over. Yes, yeah, so then we moved into a three bedroom house. We're renting as well. And then a couple of years later now, <laughs> we've been renting for a while now. Then we finally bought a house in 2013. Eh? It's 2013, yes. 2013, August. we bought this house and then we moved in here. And then it was built from scratch. Yeah, yeah, but we moved in 2013. Okay, so what has being married me too. Like, what has marriage, ten, a ten-year marriage journey, mean to you? So it's not necessarily. I think what people exaggerate is, yeah, I've been married for thirty, I've been married for forty, and married for forty, and others for five, and and that has become a contest between couples to say how long have you been married, and you feel the pressure to mention those big numbers. But is the quality of the marriage? to say how happy are you every step of the way. So is it 10 years of uh, absolute grief or is it 10 years of fun? Yeah. Others wouldn't want to start their 10 years from scratch, yeah. right? Um, I think, to be honest with me, I wouldn't want to start the first three years of my marriage because then we struggle knowing each other, understanding each other, but, but it, Pay the great deal. Yes, yes, it is important, important but it's necessary. Again, we have perspectives as to how should that unfold. Me learning you, you learning me. Yeah. We we always envision that to be a smooth process. Yeah. But the actual truth is it's not. Yeah. Because then there is a, a contest of power. You you are coming into this picture wanting to be the head of the house, and this person has been the head of her own body for the longest time and for her to give that away easily like that and say do it here become the head of my entire being it, it's quite a struggle yeah. and 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 the contest then starts over and above the other dimensions of or dynamics of marriage such as finances uh, your social circles your your families families also can really contribute if they are not well managed okay babe i'm, I'm, I'm just i'm just laying it out there okay no, but you're talking a lot though like a lot i just like hearing the sound of my voice okay <laughs> sound. Sound. i think i also want to mention the fact that um in 2010 we couldn't really um you know, just because everything happened so quickly, yeah. we couldn't really afford to have a wedding then, and that's why we had a wedding two years later in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, it was important that we saved up for the wedding that we wanted. However, for us, the actual wedding party event celebration wasn't that important. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people postpone their wedding, sometimes people postpone the fact that they want to be together because all they're thinking about is the white dress and the numbers of people that need to attend the wedding. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I don't think that's important, honestly. Um, so we got blessed in church and that worked for us. 
you know, yeah. that, that worked for us. And then when we were ready, when we were comfortable, when we did want to actually have a wedding celebration, a wedding party, and that's it. Exactly. Let's talk about in-laws. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think briefly, um, a lot of couples, they're struggling with the in-laws, uh, either from the him side or the hair side. Yeah. And, and I think um, what I would like to share about the in-laws is that if, if you are a coward man and you're not able to deal with your parents, your wife automatically becomes the victim of that situation. And if you are a woman and your father has been that hero or your family they have been that hero and you're not able to put them in their place, then your husband becomes the victim of that situation. So how I would propose that you, one handles it or recommend is that how, or, I dealt with it. how I dealt with it was that I then sit down, I sat down with my mom and my family and we had a good talk and because they got offended at me and because it was me, I have changed and all that and then they, they easily come around but if it was her, it would, even today, I think they would still be trying to resolve so I think, I think that's, that's yeah. the best way to go about it that's why the Bible says leave your mother and your father there's a reason, okay because when there's too many people in a marriage, it just becomes complex, you know, because mm. there's too many opinions, too many expectations. Mm. And I believe that when you marry and you cling to your wife or your husband and you start a family, you need to sort of start your own legacy and start your own way of Definitely. doing things. And Absolutely. in a good way, I'm not saying rebel against your yeah. family, in yeah. a good way. Start your own culture, start your own way of doing things. And and you know what? Enjoy it, you know, and everybody and else will... will Basically, will follow. Yeah, everybody else will follow. And, and in that, make room. You are going to make mistakes. And mistakes that your families will point at and say, you see, you see why you should have listened to us? But okay. those are acceptable yeah. mistakes, are expected mistakes, are mistakes that we grow from. Yes, yeah. Done. So let's talk about what we really love doing and what I think really, you know, um, what helps us detox. What really brought the spark into our marriage is our love for traveling and yeah. our love for exploring. But firstly, let me say this. The first time I ever went into a flight was with my husband. Um, <laughs> Remember that? Remember that. Mm. Um, and I think because when I got married, I was only 22. You know, I must also yep. mention that, mm. that I was actually very young. I hardly you had, had just any, 10, 22. Yeah, I hardly, hardly had any life experience. So mm. everything that I, most of the things that I experienced, I experienced with my husband. Mm. So the first time I went into a flight, where did we go? So we flew to Durban for our honeymoon and then we went to, took a boat to the Portuguese island. Yeah. And that's where we had our honeymoon. And it boat was, cruise. Boat cruise, it was amazing. It was so beautiful. Yeah, it was. And then, then we went to Cape Town for my birthday the following year mm -hmm. and then we went to Brazil the following year mm -hmm. then the following year we went to um, Zanzibar mm -hmm. and then the following year we went to New York and then the following year we went to um, Mauritius. Mauritius and then we went to Barcelona and then we went to, to Monaco mm -hmm. so <laughs> guys you know, generally I have a, I don't have such a good memory, hmm. but you see how I'm remembering all these places this that we travel to. Because I love traveling, and for me, it has really done so much good to our marriage. I know for other people, therapy might work for them, counseling and all these things. But for us, I think that time away and that time to sort of distress and spend time together and just be away from an environment that we used to really really helped our marriage and really helped us spend more time together because life is just so busy okay i think i think i think what i would say about traveling is that they are um, it's a being in a different space there are a lot of benefits yeah so I, i'm just gonna try and be brief because my wife says i take long to express so one it's as a person you need to to learn a lot about yourself in a different space how do you behave when you are a foreigner it helps you tolerate other people that you call when you yourself you are a 
what how do you behave right and and you would never understand the pain of the next person when you treat them badly until you are helpless yourself and you are in that space two it is our therapy as my wife has said we when we are dealing with something when we are abroad we, we are more calmer we are more like we, we tend to see and the beauty of life a lot the, okay let me tell you so yes a lot a lot a lot like for him a holiday is about relaxing and taking the time out I taking get it that. easy but he pushes it he pushes it to a point where i'm like no oh, let's go have breakfast no i'm sleeping do we have to have breakfast yes we do have to have breakfast no i'm tired i'm on holiday yeah but i didn't come all the way to brazil to sleep the whole day but for him the whole That's... day me sleeping he is just a party pooper and this is why the next trip that I'm taking, I'm doing a solo trip because you know what? I want to have fun. I want to do adventurous stuff. I don't just want to fly to a different country to sleep in a hotel the whole day. Guys, she's exaggerating, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I do I do sightseeing, but... <laughs> Through the hotel window. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, if you are on holiday, you can't come back tired, guys. You can't. You have to take it easy, you're changing your sleeping patterns, you're taking it easy, you like you're just lazing around. And no, that for no me what? that is like fun of I traveling. When I go on holiday, this I thing of waking up six o'clock in the morning because you have to go and do an activity. Yes. And then you sleep at ten. You come back after seven days. Guys, now you okay, want let to me lower the volume. You come back okay. after seven days. Okay, JS Moore. You yes, are tired. It's fine. I will sleep in the flight and that's my motto. When I travel, I'm <laughs> going to have so much fun that I will literally pass out in the flight. Okay? My husband sleeps too much. Anyway, <laughs> I guess you work too much as well, so you need the rest. Yeah. So we need to have two separate holidays. Book yourself into a hotel around South Africa again. Don't go and waste your and money sleep. to go and sleep over. No, I would, I would sleep in a different kind. Okay, anyway, so um, I think, you know, it's been an amazing 10 years. Yeah. And um, so thank you for a beautiful 10 years. Um, thank you to you. And yeah. Madam and, speaker. And I love you. The owner of my relationship. Okay, my head of the house. <laughs> but but honestly, me, guys, love back. I do love you. You know that. No, it's you not know about that. me knowing, it's about you saying it. Okay, cool. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm so annoyed now. Mm -hmm. No, stop. Let me see. Guys, we done. You. We done. We done. No. Yeah. No. No, you don't like you. telling me. Lovely. Guys, on my anniversary, a whole anniversary, I was wearing my beautiful white gown. I look so gorgeous. And guess what? One person didn't tell me I look beautiful. Let's not call names. Guys, let's end the video right here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Luckily, I have grown to be a strong woman who knows that she is beautiful, and nobody, absolutely nobody, can make me feel any less beautiful. Guys, guys. She is hot. You should see her in that dress. Just that. I even made it my profile pic on WhatsApp. Because of we, WhatsApp. We, we are you different. married to WhatsApp for 10 years? <laughs> Guys, we are different human beings. And I think this is what couples need to understand. It's the end of the video. So, um, so I don't even have to tell you guys about, you know, challenges. I think we've had a really difficult fair, year, fair, a fair. fairly difficult year, but we made it, but we but made, made it. it. 10 years of marriage, yep. but we made it.